Um, so, so I'm going to, I'm the only thing standing between you and lunch. And, uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and get started real quickly. And we, uh, we'll wrap up, uh, this, this summit, uh, at the very end with a, a few more Q and A's possibly, and, and then let everybody uh, head out with the rest of their day. But, uh, what I have been tasked with showing is a little bit of our product uh, strategy and where we're going with CityWorks. Um, and uh, as, uh, you know, Bradley already said, this is under, you know, um, our safe harbor statement. Uh, so things can change. It doesn't mean it's definitely going this way, um, but this is uh, this is kind of where we, we look to be going. And before I get into it too far, I want to explain our product strategy from a a standpoint of uh, overview of how we look at uh, you know moving uh, our product pipeline through the the phases. So first of all, you have to understand you know our company culture. Uh, we're Esri GIS Trimble. You know being owned by Trimble, we we look to uh, at that as our culture and 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 look to be able to uh, provide products uh, in in that light. And then that that of course. Uh, you know, looks at our vision or it basically uh, guides our vision for our uh, enterprise asset management and permitting or, uh, you know, our GIS centric platform. How are we going to, uh, you know, deploy these things? What is the, the, the vision of these two, you know, the asset management and permitting products and how, how will we, you know, uh, bring new products to the table? Of course, then that gets into, okay, what are these products going to be? Well, you, as you may know, we've really been focused on targeting apps um, like Storeroom, uh, the style that's you know going to be over, overarching all of our HTML5 apps, our pavement, uh, you know, and, 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 and some of the apps like that. And so what you're going to see is uh, as we go through this uh, for the next few minutes, there's a lot more apps that are coming out that will break apart, uh, I love the slide uh, that uh, Round Rock gave of, uh, of, you know, the camel with like way too, too much stuff on his back. I guess I was a camel underneath all that stuff. But, uh, you know, Office, we're going to, we're, we're, we've been slowly and methodically busting out pieces of what was traditionally known as Office and all the tools that went with it. And we've been making these apps. And of course, all the web services and APIs have to be underlying under all of them as well. And then, of course, we also look at the market. What is the market doing? You know, we get RFPs all the time. And, and, and you know, if we find something that keeps coming up that we don't do and the market, market is asking for it, then, then those are also factors that, you know, we, we, that play into this, you know, as we go through. So um, let's look at the pipeline. So right now, our release pipeline. So there's actually a few phases of our pipeline in development. Uh, you know, coming soon. You've heard people talk about coming soon. I think uh, uh, that's something Mitch said a while ago. And then, and then uh, so we have coming soon. Then we have in development. Then we have future. So in development right now, um, we have a lot of different things from PACP seven updates to extensibility in the HTML5 apps where you can actually start designing your own stuff, kind of like the XML where you start building out your own, uh, you know, your own little widgets within the uh, within the application. So there's extensibility there. Um, you know, we've we're we're looking at a case data field population and uh, you know asset curves, and we're going to talk about some of these uh, throughout. But then you know also uh, like uh, indoors and in, 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 including a z-level coordinate so you know right now everything is x y but if we put that z-level coordinate then we can start really extrapolating 3d maps and those types of things and so this is all in development right now within cityworks um our in design things that have, have not been put into development yet but we're looking at it of course is 3d but in order to get that 3D visualization and map viewer, we had to have this base of, of Z coordinate values. And, and because CityWorks is so integrated with the Esri product, you know, that's, that's a, a large undertaking just to add those Z coordinates all throughout our product. And so, you know, there's some uh, things that are in design that you're going to see that we're going to talk a little bit about. But as you can see, you know, like an Elm add-on. 
right now elm equipment labor and material is just a uh a piece of office and then in respond it uh it actually pulls into that office page and and you see it in respond um we're going to actually have an add-on that will be something that we can then move around from app to app and so if we find another app that maybe uh, Elm would be useful in, then at that point in time, we could then attach it to that because it's going to be a standalone app um, that, that is called upon, you know? And so those are some of the things that are in design. Of course, like we talked about, there's market analysis that we do on a regular basis that, uh, that we're looking at. Uh, it's definitely further and future down the line, but these are some of the things. And then of course, you know, we're evaluating some different people's interest on asset life cost management and, and unified workflow management uh, uh, throughout the products. So, um, so now let's just take one of those items, like the ArcGIS indoors. Uh, this is a product that uh, that is, is coming pretty soon, um, and we've uh, we've tied it into indoors. Uh, and as long as you have, uh, you know. Uh, Esri's indoors, you could actually have the Esri indoor application, select a, a floor, create a work activity on an individual room inside of a building, and maybe it's to clean that room, and then it would create a cleaning work order within CityWorks. And so as you can see, like over here, there's a carpet cleaning uh, on this one room right here that was done inside of Esri's app and created a work order inside of CityWorks. So so Esri and CityWorks has been working very closely at this, and uh, and we've been working with their teams there. And you know, this is uh, something that's you know coming out before too long. It's uh, it's it's on the coming soon path. So we talked about released, coming soon, and development in future. And so I'm going to talk about public access first. So this is our PLL public access application in public access five that was released. These are some of the enhancements that, uh, that we added, like guest access or UI customization support. Um, coming soon, you see there's a, a wide array of things that are coming soon, like wave fees visibility, our exposing checklist, and, and, and those types of things. Um, in development, you can see some of the case comments and additional uh, payment engine uh, you know, items. Uh, and then we have some futuristic stuff that may come out, uh, you know, at a later time. We're, we're looking at some of these things. Um, and so, and, and there's probably a lot more that could still come out. But here is a payment engine item. And so basically you would go in, you would, uh, you know, create uh, in the background, in the admin part, uh, what you wanted to see. And in this case, Express Bill Pay comes out as a payment engine. Um, and so you could kind of go in and define your payment engines. Another thing you could do is like we talked about those wave fees. Um, right here in the public access piece, we've added that uh, uh, ability for you know the, the client to see what fees you're going to waive for them. Um, so another app is Storeroom. Uh, and so I can't talk about all of the different things that we're doing uh, in the 15 to 20 minutes that I have, but uh, just to kind of give you an idea, you know, uh, dashboards, queries, new search functions, improved UI, improved navigation in, in, in Storeroom. Uh, Storeroom has had a whole lot of things that, that we've been working on, that we've done uh, to it, uh, because, you know, we know that there's a lot of uh, items that uh, clients would like to see. And so, um, you know, attachments, signature capture. And so here's a signature capture that we'll have inside of our storeroom in the, in, in the uh, you know, the, the coming months and in, in, in years. Uh, once again, it's a it's a in development type of thing. So we don't know how long it'll finish before we release it, but it is out there and it is coming. Um, so just know that we are working on these things and you you, you will be able to see them respond now we you know a lot has been talked about even today about respond respond uh has gotten a lot of attention a lot of people are, are moving towards it um it's you know it's very easy to use it's very flexible um in the different releases we've had you know different enhancements uh from you know uh split screen mapping to you know just all kinds of stuff map resizing those types of things 
but we have a huge development cycle and coming soon cycle with Respawn. I mean, in fact, so much that we're not even going to be able to fit everything onto the page. But like, uh, you know, like Mitch was saying, barcode asset lookup, you know, uh, additional JavaScript map widgets, um, PLL flag notifications, apply to all editing uh, would be a future enhancement. And, and then, of course, that extensibility model. All of these things are, are being looked at. And, and as you can see, we ran out of circle, so we, uh, we, we can't put any more. But there's just a, a ton more things that we are looking at with Respawn. Um, here's actually uh, the, the dashboard that's coming soon. And so you see that a lot of the pages are, a lot of the panels are color coded. Uh, it just helps it bring it to life a little bit more, uh, as well as, you know, embedding, you know, even Esri's uh, op, ops dashboard from an HTML, uh, HTML uh, widget that's built into the dashboard as well. So dashboard design, uh, searching on attachments. I find this one uh, going, I think this is going to be very helpful to be able to search attachment tags uh, and uh, that way that you can uh, find the attachment you want, especially if there's a lot of attachments on any given PLL or, or, or work order, um, you know, screen already. Uh, being able to have case data fields from the GIS, uh, so data from the GIS applied to case data fields. Um, and this is something that actually we're looking to do with AMS uh, in the future as well. Um, but uh, this is uh, one of those things that uh, will be coming before the AMS side of it. Or, or the asset lookup, like Mitch just showed um, with, uh, you know, the application, read a barcode, uh, grab your HTML5 and uh, or your hydrant uh, in the HTML5 uh, respond app. And now I have that lookup, you know, right there in front of me. I know that, uh, you know, some, some of the folks were talking about asset management and, you know, hey, you can start with asset management anywhere, but if you really want to get into going further into asset management, you have your operational insights tool that we have, and that'll help you with your consequence of failure and your uh, probability of failure and your business risk exposure um, and, and be able to give you uh, actual um, conditions of, of those and, 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 and scores uh, from our operational insights application. And so, but, we, but we're also building in, you know, uh, uh, asset curves and then being able to write those uh, curves uh, to the GIS, um, dashboard queries, um, you know, maintenance scheduling, all of this is kind of also being put into the operational insights piece of, of the house. And that will then in turn tie into our OPEX for long-term future, things that we're exploring right now uh, OPEX is going to be something that will bring operational insights, uh, budgeting tool, contracts, and project management all into uh, one uh, OPEX environment uh, to be able to better manage your, your organization. So these are some of the views of some asset curves, um, you know, from operational insights. Uh, I know, you know, it doesn't really explain all of it, and I don't have time to get into all of it right now, but this will be some things that you'll be able to see, and you'll be able to see if a, if if an asset is is moving on a slow curve, then you can see that maybe you have a lot longer lifespan than if it you know if, if it's a faster curve uh, from the model, you know. Um, native apps. Um, you, many of you use our native apps, our iOS and Android application, but we've been making large enhancements to our native apps. Uh, from 8.1 to 8.2 and then on to 9, which will be, you know, uh, you know, coming in the, in the future. Uh, there's uh, enable uh, sync from activities, uh, you know, field support for ArcGIS indoors, uh, which we talked about, uh, displaying uh, requester fields. And then, of course, you know, uh, all of these other things that we want to put in development, like project tracking and contract line items and PLL violations. The list just goes on and on. As you can see, I, we ran out of circle to, to kind of show you that. So there's a lot there that's coming out in the future. We talked about the Elm and how, you know, we have Elm for Respond now, but we're actually building an app that will be uh, out there. So everything is in development right now. There's a ton of things in development for the Elm app. Um, and it will be something that I think uh, organizations will, you know, really get a lot of use for. And we're going to have a APIs to support it, FEMA support, layout support so you can go into style and lay it out 
um, you know, look kind of like what uh, the Round Rock folks were showing in their their demonstration. And so there's a lot of different things that you'll be able to have layout preferences for different groups. Um, these are big items that that will be coming out. Many of you know we've had for many many years a, a, a application called Designer, and it's been in the office. Um, but we are removing it from Office and making an a application called Admin. So Designer in the future will be called Admin. It will be an app. Um, and so we have the first iteration of this app coming soon. And, um, and we have some other things in development, but we, we know there's a lot more that's going to have to go on. So Designer is not going away. Don't get worried. Uh, it's not going away anytime soon. Um, but uh, But the app will eventually equal all of uh, the functionality and designer and then more and so and at that point in time then you probably won't even want to use designer anymore because admin is going to be uh you know an html5 app that you can you can you know have responsive design and, and do it on your tablet or or wherever and then we talked a little bit about the opex and and i think this is my last one but we talked a little bit about opex uh, throughout and, and, and right now in development is the project manager with contracts, um, inspections and PLL case tracking, you know, those types of things. But, but over time, OPEX is going to do so much more. It's going to have built-in dashboards. We're looking at Gantt charts to be able to, to project out your projects and be able to see how, how they are working. Adding in our performance budgeting tool into this overall aspect of the OPEX environment so that you can start looking at budgeting and those types of things. And of course, having it with public APIs so that you can build integrations to it and, uh, and, and bring data in and out and be able to actually manage data in a new way. Um, we're really excited about the vision of OPEX. Um, and, and, and I just think that there's going to be a lot there that you'll, you know, you'll want to uh, look at in the future.